What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another Android game review. So for this particular game review, it's going to be the 1993 game Doom, developed by ID Software at the time, and released for Android by Beth Bethesda. Um, I'm not sure if they bought one and bought the other out, or if it was a change of ownership, but in any case, the game is available for Android in the form of the Ultimate Doom, which is a uh, proper name for the game I'll be reviewing. Um, so the game has four chapters. It starts with Knee Deep in the Dead, the, um, the Shores of Hell, Inferno, and Thy Flesh Consumed. Uh, from there you have the option to, um, or when you start playing the game, you have the option to select from four difficulty levels. Um, I actually didn't note the names, but basically it goes for um, easy, um, easy, medium, medium hard and then hard and I think there's also a fifth one called nightmare or ultra violence one of the high end ones so it's basically if you're really good at playing the game and you have really good aim then um you can get through that game or if you're speed running and you want to play it get through the game as fast as possible on the hardest level then that's for me that's kind of what that's there for but basically if your skill is really high then you can try it on nightmare mode where you get a big number of bosses um in playing, I played it on the easiest level just because for me, I did play a couple of or, of the original levels in the first chapter, but I don't think I've ever really gotten be, beyond maybe the second, for the first episode, second level, maybe third level at most. I don't really remember just because I don't know if I've, if I've it's just because I have trouble playing the game. I'm not really good at the game or never really piqued my interest at the time. But I decided that I'd finally play the game, see how it, see what the all the hubbub is about, and see if I can actually finish the game and um, see what all the boss levels are about, and get that context, contextual awareness of the game. So overall, I want to say that the game, for what it did in 1993, is actually really well done. It essentially pioneered the first-person shooter game. Uh, multiple levels, different um, bosses, episodic uh, chapters, uh, multiple levels of different types. Um, you could arguably say that the, some of the levels were repurposed maps of some of the other levels, but they do an interesting thing with uh, layers and textures and things like that. So even though you're playing on one solid level and you're really only going um, forward, backward, left and right, basically in a 2D, it's kind of like a 2D, 3D merged um, environment so even though you have stairs that make it look like you're going up or down you're really only going straight um, but it gives you that perspective as if you were going up and down and then sometimes things do stand out where you do have um, enemies on different levels and when you shoot it your weapon does fire upward even though you don't actually move your um, gun up and down you don't have that ability to move your gun around in a 3d space like you would do in most modern games so thinking similarly to games like um, um, Max Payne for me and basically any other game that allows you to move your gun around. So that's one of the drawbacks but when you're playing a game once you get used to that you don't really notice any um, downside. The only major drawback for the game now playing it uh, almost 30 basically 27 years later is that the graphics don't really stand out. It's very pixelated but the graphics for the time were very well done, so even playing it now, it does. It's, you can think of it kind of like a retro 8-bit game that's released now, um, but this is something that was done 27 years ago, so it isn't that all that difficult to play, so things kind of get hard to see when you're up close on an enemy, when there's one of the invisible um, demons that you have to kill, but all of that also gets chalked up to this is something that they were doing in the early 90s versus something that's being done now. So overall, the game is worth playing. I definitely recommend uh, giving it a shot if you kind of like those horror action games. Um, and it does, even on the easiest level, it felt difficult enough. It kind of becomes a rather more rather than just a demonic or defeating the demons of hell, You it becomes... Um, a maze platform game where you have to um, get through a maze of a level and then figure out how to get to the exit um, either by finding the door to begin with going through secret levels um, or finding key cards and things like that in order to 
unlock different doors to get to different parts of the uh, level. Um, so with some of that stuff out of the way, um, overall the story I, I found kind of holds up even though in the game it was kind of scarce. As far as kind of what you're um, trying to do in the game, so one of those things that I recommend doing is reading a little bit about the story beforehand um, because in the at least in the Android game you don't really get much of so what's going on aside from you're a guy dropped into uh, some sort of demonic invasion. So essentially what happens is or what happened is that the employees of the UAC, the Union Aerospace Corporation, somehow were able to open a portal to hell on their Mars base. So um, the base was overrun by imps and demons and various other creatures of hell. So what you're trying to do is save the base. But what as it turns out, by the time you defeat the barons of hell at the end of the first um, chapter, you're teleported to uh, intermediary uh, way station for hell. I think it's the one called Phobos, but it's, and that's basically the sh that's the ch second chapter called the Shores of Hell. So from there, you need to continue fighting off the demons of hell to figure out how to close the portal. And then once you get into Inferno, you're actually teleported to hell. It's or sorry, at the end, and then at the end of um, the Shores of Hell, you have to fight a cyber demon, which is guarding the gateway to hell itself so once you're able to do that you're teleported to hell itself and your goal there is to figure out how to close the portal from that side and somehow get back or either accept the fate that you're going to be stuck there and you have to die, live out the rest of your life in hell but um that's the point of the third chapter is that now you're finding your way through hell to close off that portal and defeat all the forces of hell there um the the final boss of the game and the big boss of that third um, episode or chapter is called the spider demon or the spider mastermind that um, orchestrated the descending the demons on earth and I guess by the time you finish that third chapter um, you learn that as you're the character doom guy um, that they were able to send the forces uh, their forces on the way to earth so now your goal in thy flesh consumed is to defeat those forces of hell that are trying to make their way back to earth so even though you might have closed part of their forces you now have to defeat the rest of their forces um so by the end of the fourth chapter you still have to de you now have to defeat another boss which is essentially just this another spider demon or another spider mastermind so from i didn't see as to why it's the same or what the history or the full history of the spider mastermind but i guess it's that there's multiple of them and they're the overlords for hell aside from um the devil himself or herself but um once you do that you you can basically you're basically proven to hell that you're stronger than hell so you can um head back to earth to enjoy your retirement but as it turns out um hell had already um been able to get some forces over to earth so now you have to so the purpose of doom 2 is to defeat the forces of hell so that you can save the human race back on earth so um i haven't really read too much of doom 2 as to how that directly ties in but um thy flesh consumed is what caused doom 1 to be renamed from doom to the ultimate doom and it serves as a sequel to doom so that you learn what happened after the events of doom 1 and it serves as a prequel to Doom 2 in that um, you learn that Hell had already accounted for the possibility that there's forces or the invasion had already been underway. So um, even though you def defeated half of their forces, you now have to defeat the rest of them in order to save Earth and humanity. So there's a lot of backstory in the game which isn't really conveyed well in the game itself so i didn't see and i didn't see anything in the game to give that sort of history or backstory and i guess and some of the um inter the screens between the episodes um give a little bit of transition between the episodes and then at the end of or between um in the chapters titled inferno and thy flesh consumed you get a little bit of story there that you save the you close the portal and you saved everything, but have you really? Um, but I guess as it turns out, the the idea of your character as the Doom guy to return to hell, to, or sorry, to return to Earth to save humanity, is that um, the invading forces of hell on Earth def um, overtook your character's hometown and killed your pet rabbit, I guess. 
which made you mad, but that's not too far fetched now, seeing as how we can have a movie trilogy around John Wick because the bad guys killed his dog, so that wasn't really very well conveyed in the game, so it would have been nice to have a little bit more of that, so aside from a story, it's just your character going through various levels to defeat these various demons. Um, but overall, the game, or knowing, going into the game knowing that, that you're trying to defeat a hellish invasion on a Mars base to, to save the UAC Corporation's base and all that, and then you're now trying, and then it becomes a game into saving humanity from hell, or the universe from hell. It is a very good game and worth playing. I um, getting beyond the second and third um, levels on the first chapter were definitely worth it. Um, the first chapter's game or levels are probably the most recognizable, probably because that was a chapter available in the shareware version. Um, so people see that. But when you get into the second, third, and even the fourth chapters, you do see a lot of um, the intricacies that went into making the game. Um, you get progressively uh, better and better weapons. So I think. But in the first chapter, you end up with uh, the rocket launcher as being the biggest um, weapon by the, um, I think the second and third, um, or sorry, by the second one, it's the same thing. You, you only really end up with the rocket launcher, but by the in the third chapter is where it really comes in in that you get the um, biggest and best weapon of the game called the BFG-9000. It stands for the big effing gun um although in the doom film you they call it the bio, bio force gun i guess but in any case it was an experimental gun created by the uac corporation that essentially creates a big powerful i want to say I, and this might not be completely accurate but it's kind of like an ionized weapon that takes out most um forces basic forces in one shot and if you're going after um, villains and enemies like the Cyber Demon or the um, Spider Mastermind, it takes a couple of shots, either, you know, like maybe five or six at a distance and then maybe two or three at close range. But essentially, it's a weapon that allows you to defeat those enemies relatively easy if you're able to find cover and have a few well placed shots. You can defeat those enemies with rocket launcher or with the rocket launcher, but you do need a lot of rockets to do so, and you need to place your shots very well. So, um, when you're watching my gameplay videos, you'll see that in uh, fighting the cyber demon, you do need a lot of rockets and well play and well placed shots, and you do need to hide a lot in order to um, defeat him. And then same thing with the spider mastermind. When you get the BFG nine thousand, you do need to use what little cover you have to defeat the defeat the spider de um, spider demon um i was reading a little bit online and i did see that you can use the um, other enemies in the, that final boss fight with the spider demon to have them fight each other so it reduces its health a little bit and i guess if there's more enemies you can uh, if you play so well and have them fight each other then that helps you out a little bit but i mean playing it on the easy level you have enough um cover and ability to hide in order to um, defeat him relatively easily. So overall, as I mentioned, I do recommend playing the game. It, it was very fun. The perspectives are nice. Um, the levels, as I said, are pixelated, but it's relatively easy to get through. The secret levels kind of hold up. So early on, I was trying to find some of those secret levels in order to get, you know, health power-ups, different guns and weapons and ammunition and all of that. But, I mean, as the game progressed, I spent less time worrying about secret levels and um, things like that and spend more time just in the levels and trying to navigate around to finish the level so get to the next one just because that the story became that much more interesting and it was more interesting to get through the levels figure out the uh, maze and make sure I defeat as many enemies as possible um, and then the other thing is that you do the game introduced something called a par system so kind of like golf where you get kind of how long the level should take in general or on average to get through so some levels are the easier levels to require less time the harder levels require a little bit more time and it'll tell the game tells you how many enemies you killed how many items you picked up how many secrets you found and how long it took you for, you for you to finish the level so you'll see for me i mean i wasn't really going for time it was more of exploration trying to find the exit getting through various 
parts of the level and in some cases dying a few times in order as I tried to figure out how to defeat various characters and get through the lava pits and all of that. So that was one of those things that was very well done. Also, and that's one of those things you find, you learn to appreciate in the game is that you're in the 2D game, how they had lava pits and how you did go up and down and how they had created that effect as if you were falling into a pit or going upstairs, teleporting to different parts of the level and all of that stuff. So overall, it is a game worth playing. Um, and as a, so, um, if I were to give it a grade, I'd give it a grade of probably about an A- minus to a B plus. The controls are okay for a mobile system, um, but if you've played um, games of this of, with similar controls, and it's not too far as far as the learning curve, it's similar to, and I will go back to Max Payne because I did play that recently, but it is along the lines of Max Payne as far as controls, so if you've played that, um, it's not too hard, not too... Um, the learning curve is not as hard as one would imagine, so um, there is that as well. Um, so that's all there is for that, and as I mentioned in my review for Silent Hill, um, I did want to do a bonus review to compare Doom, the video game, to Doom, the movie, and how I now have a better appreciation for why people did not like the Doom film. And for me, I can, I'm can i leaning now toward more towards um, the reviews of why it didn't do so well in that the movie I feel now thinking having thought about it for a little bit um, is that the movie didn't go far enough for the characters and what they could have done to compare the to kind of translate the video games to the movies um, so granted they were kind of using more of the Doom 3 as a base for the Doom film but to me I think that the film should have taken is template for the plot and story from Doom 1 in that they could have made Doom 1 about how um, you have or essentially or I guess I'll take a step it back a bit but essentially you keep the beginning of Doom the same where you have the scientists opening the portal and you have the demons overrunning the base on Mars keep it the same and then you keep um, the rock ta taking on the mission but instead of having him build a team to go to the base to defeat them you um take you have him go to the base as a soul force because he's supposed to be the biggest and best warrior and they don't want to risk too many forces because they don't know what's going on have him kind of be the reconnaissance and leave him and have him go to mars but have the have uac or the marine space marines um lose contact with him so now they have to send in the team which kind of would be the, a nod to Doom 1 having multiplayer, so you can start the game with multiple Marines. And by the time you... And then so when those Marines go to the base, um, you they can still meet up with Pinky, and um, as the bases are overrun, they, he can tell them that... Their Pinky can tell them, the t Space Marines, that they lost contact with the one guy that they sent. And... Um, but essentially, they have to now find out what happened to The Rock's character. For me, it would have been better to, um, instead of having his name be Sarge, have his name be Cyber. And so by the time they find him, is it, or, and then over the course of the level, have the different characters, or, like basically uh, Carl Urban and then all the kid and all those other guys, go through the base and various levels, so to speak to try to figure out what happened to Cyber or the Sarge to make it easy for reference. Um, they all, for various through various events in the film, die out because they're unable to figure out what's going on. They don't have the right weapons or, you know, for example, one person has a, a pistol and another one only has a shotgun, another one only has a rail gun. So, um, because, um, so instead of uh, making the audience think the Sarge is, or the Rock is going to be the Doom guy, you slowly transition Carl Urban into becoming the Doom guy. So now you're following him. And as he goes around to find all the different characters, he picks up their weapons. So he picks up the pistol and a chainsaw and a um, railgun and shotgun and all of that. I don't know how they would translate the uh, plasma gun, but I would not be against merging the plasma gun and the BFG 9000 and just call it the BFG for the sake of the film because it's kind of duplicating a weapon 
but um, as Carl Urban either meets up with his sister or he's navigating the base, he gets to a secret room that he's not supposed to know about or even a locked room to find the gun, picks it up, and now that becomes his weapon to find the Sarge or to find the rock. Um, and by the time he gets to finding the rock, he find or sorry, I'll take that back even one more time, but he gets to a locked room. It, doesn't, it can be a yellow, blue, or red key card to kind of um, have that throwback to the game. He finds a BFG 9000, and then now he has to find out what happened to the Rock, who is locked up, let's say, in a secret room. And when he finds where the secret room is, in order to save the base and essentially end the level, or sorry, end the chapter, um... Or and essentially end the film. He has to now defeat whatever happened to the Rock. And as it turns out, he's either one of three, one of two characters. Either he be, he's become a Baron of Hell, or he's become the Cyber Demon. So um, by having him called the Cyber and becoming a demon, that's my whole cheesy way of saying that he's become the Cyber Demon. Or even I guess just to make him a slight and to make him slightly less. Uh, or sorry, if they and if they, that had done well, done well, or they had done it along those lines, they could have made two films or a trilogy of films around the original Doom, where um, the Rock originally becomes a um, Baron of Hell, and by whatever by whatever happened, or because um, Hell now has a research of UAC, they were able to clone him, but it goes terribly wrong. So in the sequel to Doom, and they can keep the um, taglines of um, the second and third chapters in the game and say, so the first one would be just Doom. I mean, they could call it Knee Deep in the Dead, but I don't know how well that would go over, but they could call Doom 2 the Shores of Hell and Doom 3, Doom 3 Inferno. But in the second film, they could introduce a teleportation technology. So Carl Urban is now teleported to Phobos, and that's where he goes through those levels um, then they can map it according to the game or create new levels or something along those lines where they make it semi-hellish and by the end of it he meets up with the cyber demon who is essentially a clone of the rock but much more bigger and badder and that's where he now has to use um, the BFG 9000 again in order to take out the cyber demon and then in Doom 3 essentially do the same thing as the game and have the similar looking levels or create the levels accordingly so that it makes sense and this is where we learned that Pinky from the first movie had been masterminding the whole thing and has now upgraded himself with the um, powers of hell so now he's the spider demon so now Carl Urban has having defeated the cyber demon is the only one that UAC or the space marines trust to defeat the spider demon so they send him to to hell either by ship or through uh, one of the teleportation devices that they found and um they send him over there to defeat the spider demon have a similar simple level to for him to get to and defeat him and then send him back so for me it seems like they could have planned it out a lot better than they did and they really didn't go far enough I'm guessing because of budgeting regions, reasons, because you have the raw Carl Urban and Rosamund Pike, I guess, in the film, and then having the budget to put into the first person's perspective um, killed any idea of taking the demons any further. But if they had kind of done it along these lines, I probably would have preferred this more over than having the first person perspective. And I think people would have liked that a little bit more than what they did in the film to begin with. So. Um, that's kind of my two cents on that. The Doom film could have been better, and they could, even if they wanted to just do the one film, um, introduce Pinky as a mini, um, or leave everything as, or leave, make the story a mimic, or copy the game from Knee Deep in the Dead of Doom, the first episode of Doom, and just make the final boss a cyber demon. You cast the rock in that character just because they were able to CGI him up in the Scorpion King, so they could have used that similar technology to turn him into this um, uh, cyber demon. And granted, the Scorpion King wasn't well done, so they probably didn't want to do that, but to me, that would have made the Doom film that much better. So that's all there is for this particular review. So in the show notes, we'll ha I'll have a link to the playlist 
the gameplay playlist for Doom 1. Um, it's essentially in order, the order that I played it, all uh, as usual available in 4K, all on uh, YouTube, so you can check that out. Um, and the game is available, I think it's $4.99 in the Google Play Store. I'll, I think it's the same price on iOS as well, but I'll have a link in the show notes to both versions, so whether you're playing on iOS or Android, you can definitely check out that game. So with that, that's all there is for this review. So now I'm going to jump into Doom 2 to see how that holds up. I, from my initial readings, it doesn't look like they did anything, any major upgrades as far as the gameplay visuals, but they did introduce a couple of new villains and a new couple of new weapons, maybe one or two weapons. Um, I'm still going to read into the, uh, who the bosses are and things like that as I get through it. Um, and they're spending less time on episodic gameplay and more of a uh, streamlined gameplay for the whole game. So you still have 32 chapters that are loosely based into um, different episodes, but it's more just play the 32 levels and um, as one and take it from there. So that's all there is for this review. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all of that good stuff. And of course the YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash PatelN01 for all of the Doom gameplay videos and also prior game and app reviews like... Um, Limbo, Max Payne, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and of course coming soon, Doom 2. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode and review, and until next time.